Mark, do you want to introduce him? Uh, yeah. yes, Last presentation again. Reminder: If you need a snack before lunch, eleven to three, the Martin Hall atrium in the lobby. There, they'll have snacks uh, for you to purchase to support the Archaeology, Geography, Anthropology Society. Um, our next student is Tim Gaskins. He's been working with Dr. Gar Harshi and um, looking at air pollution in Alabama, and he's presented at CDAG as well as uh, some other regional conferences. He works for Oxford Waterworks, and he's going to be presenting at AVG as well. We look forward to seeing the work he's doing, and this project has been developed over a couple of years, so we've seen some growth in it, and we look forward to his next step. So, welcome to Gaskins. Thank you. A uh, quick thank you to uh, Dr. Case and the others for letting me reschedule. Uh, I attended the funeral yesterday, so I was glad to be able to still come and present. Uh, I wouldn't usually start at the beginning, but I decided to start in the middle for this. Uh, if you look at the green map in the center, uh, that is looking at air pollution, but uh, more specifically the TRI facilities, which are basically toxic release inventory facilities, such as uh, maybe you think of uh, the paper mill in Oxford near cold water. You know, you see those smokestacks and stuff, that would be something that was considered in there. And this small map was what I started working on in intro to GIS. Just looking at the median income of uh, each uh, census tract and looking at the TRI facilities and seeing if there was any sort of correlation in that. And it did turn out that most of the TRI facilities were in areas that were lower income. So when it came to the more advanced GIS classes and knowing that I would get a chance to present at CDAG, I wanted to sort of continue this study and <clears throat> go further with it. So I decided to look at the asthma equity index, which is basically just looking at you know, who has more asthma? Does, it, does this area get sick more often? Does this area with the kids in school, do they have asthma more often than other areas? So looking at all of that, <clears throat> I did a spatial join with all of the TRI facilities to where I could look at where they were in these areas once again. And <clears throat> uh, using this social equity index, I use a bunch of different demographic indicators. Uh, along with the uh, just asthma, so it was also the social vulnerabilities such as low income, uh, single parent households, uh, minority households, no high school diploma. Just looking at the bottom 25% of these tracts where they were basically more prevalent to possibly not have health, good health insurance. They may not have the ability to go and travel to see a good doctor in another area, stuff like that. <clears throat> So looking at these different uh, rankings, bottom 25% of tracks in the state were calculated, and uh, looking at all of those along with the uh, 2.5 uh, particulate matter that was um, looked at here in the state, and this sort of spread out, and over the course of the years, it has gotten better, but there, and I'll get to in a second how we could potentially get even better, hopefully, with more data. And looking at the concentrations that it has on the effect of the hospital, at the hospitalization rates with this uh, uh, particular matter. <clears throat> uh, I was trying to find some research and I found that in one Pennsylvania study, uh, just one microgram per meter cubic, uh, per cubic meter increased the concentration of particular matter through all the counties in the state and raised the number of annual asthma hospitalizations by over 400. So there's already been some basic research done and I would like to sort of bring that down to Alabama as someone who does have family members who have pretty bad asthma. <clears throat> when it comes to looking at the TRI facilities, the median household income here in Alabama is about just under $4,800,000. And 66% of those TRI facilities are in those areas. Of the tracks in lower 25%, 80% average below $35,000 per household. And the, as I mentioned earlier, the particular matter levels are lowering. Uh, when you look at the lowest ranked track when it comes to the asthma equity index, when you look at the particulate matter levels there, 
the levels are about 8.68 micrograms per cubic meter. And if you zoom in on Birmingham specifically, because there are a lot of GR facilities right there around the Birmingham area, uh, the particulate matter levels are 9.36 micrograms per cubic meter, which is significantly higher. The number there is in the top almost 5% of the state, just in that one small specific area. And 10% of all of the facilities are there in that one little area. <clears throat> so if we are looking at places where the asthma is very uh, more prevalent, and especially zoomed in on that map, a lot of those areas, the strong areas are right there in Birmingham. There's a what I believe is a correlation that leads to where those TR facilities may be an impact on that. Uh, while the overall particular matter is lower across the state, it's still the ninth highest in the, camp, in the country, but it is something to keep working on. <clears throat> the levels that Alabama has is basically just under the limit that's set. It's, we're not really going above and beyond. We're not really doing everything that we can. We're just getting under the level and just you know, seeing what sticks pretty much, I believe. So just continually studying this, continually working on how we can improve this and maybe the, the ramifications of this and the, the consequences can help push forward towards lowering this level and making sure that everyone can have a, a better air to breathe. And then looking at all these, one of the things that I would really like to work on, which is probably at my current level of understanding, way too hard for me, but uh, finding out basically the chicken or the egg, you know, which came first. Are these areas already being impacted? Are they already low income areas? And so that's where they put the TR facilities? Or are these areas places that have good health, have good uh, income and everything, and then the TR facilities are put there and that's what lowers everything? So I would like to find out if they are putting them in areas that are low income because who cares about low income people? It's the sort of mindset. And by default, you know, these people aren't gonna have great health insurance. These people aren't gonna have great needs in order to basically help their asthma and help other health risks. <clears throat> so that is my, uh, the study so far that I, have been, that I have been working on. Are there any questions or anything? Um, so you have like a highlighted portion of Birmingham, but I think, um, would you agree that another large portion of this that's being impacted is the Black Belt in Alabama? Uh, Which the Black Belt is kind of runs through yeah. like the lower southern like portion. Where that green right there is. Kind yeah, of that one, and then I'm looking at the top right map as well um, mm -hmm. with the red and everything. Um, so that might be... Um, the black belt may have a few answers regarding the chicken or the egg question. That's a good, good point out there. Look into it. Thank you. I wonder if this is better or worse different since years ago when the steel industry collapsed. That would be something to look at. Uh, sort of along those lines, you know, with it going down, it's not in 98, all the, the levels, it's, it's improving. So I would like to find more. I think a lot of this data, especially when it came to the asthma stuff, which is kind of hard to find because there's not a lot of data for Alabama. We're just doing the bare minimum on a lot of things. So I would like to really go back and just track a lot of things that, I would like to make a lot of maps. That's pretty much what it comes down to. I like maps. <clears throat> More question for our speaker? If not, let's thank him. <laughs>